Well, I hope it didn't creep you out too much. Or maybe I creep you out entirely and you can't sleep now. <laughs> it's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah, fuck with me. Yo, what up? Eat good, live well, stay true. What is going on, you guys? Back with a mukbang story time today. Of course, we have my, you know what? I'm just going to say it. It's my favorite. I don't know. I know BK is like, in a way, it's like kind of weirdly disgusting, trashy. It seems low ball, but like, I don't, I just, as time has gone on, it, time and time, it just proves again and again, it's delicious. And I just, I would choose it over like a lot of stuff. So I know I've done it a lot on my channel, but it's coupon season. The coupons came out. You can't say no to a two can dine for ten ninety nine. The two can dines came out. I'm like, you know what? I got to dine. Even though I'm one, I can dine for two, or at least I can try. So once I get my BK Crave, it's game on and game over all at the same time. So you guys know I got the Whopper, classic, the best. Heavy all, extra sauce, extra veggies. I'm a veggie saucy guy. We got the chicken sando, the weird football shaped sort of one. It's like half a sub sort of thing, you know what I mean? Of course we went with the fring combo, fries, rings. Now, new development, probably not America, because America's all, you got every single pop on tap or soda, but BK just introduced Cherry Coke on the tap. <laughs> Pardon me? That is revolutionary to me. A cherry cola beverage on the tap? Come on. Also, we're going to tell you my most scary story since it is October and that was requested from the last video. I will tell you my most personal ghost story. Now, disclaimer, when I had 800 subs, so that's a long way from 33,000. So if you're an OG rider, you've heard this before. Or if you've creeped me that far back, you've also heard this before. So shout out to you for being a huge creep or an OG rider. But I'm thinking that, you know, there's so many new people that I can reshare this because to me, it's pretty crazy. And also it's just like, I've had like two or three experiences, but this one is definitely the most like intense one. So I just feel like I want to reshare it and tell it to all the new people on the channel. So let's get into the food. So if you guys know me, you know, I'm going to have to investigate a little bit, just see what's popping. So the lettuce game, a little bit weak. They didn't really hook it up that good. There is a nice amount of tomato. Chill amount of onions, chill amount of pickles. So they didn't really do it that proper, but that's why I'm here to do what I need to do. Always extra ketchup. A light, uh, light mailing in the forecast. And then of course, this is the move with a Frings situation. Yeah, you know what? I was going to go for it. That's the infinity ring. But uh, you got to put the rings. Let's see, does this guy fit in there? That's a weird looking like a sour key or some shit. Fries could go down too. It's a happy family of fried delights. Pop the top. And. That, ladies and gentlemen, is topped and ready for play. Now we have the chicken sando. I asked for heavy all, so that just means really lettuce and mayo. Not really going to care about that. All right, first things first before we get to the story. Come on, have a look at that. Let's go. Gotta vacuum up those lettuce scraps always. Oh my god. So good, I was craving this so hard. So the story goes like this. When I was younger, I 
gonna say I was again in the neighborhood of maybe ten years old, nine, ten years old. And uh, my parents got divorced really young, or when I was really young, I should say. So my mom moved into an apartment in a old mansion. You know, like an 1800s mansion that's been retrofitted into apartments. There were three on the main floor and two on the top floor. My mom had the furthest one on the top floor. And when I say mansion, this place was big. It was a stone mansion, huge yard, all like enclosed by huge hedges. And um, the apartments were quite large, actually massive to be honest, considering the places I lived in. And so we would stay a week on at my dad's, a week on at my mom's. But in her apartment, her room was like a king's domain. It was like fucking huge. It was like the living, the dining and living room space, her room was like as big as that. So like she just had a massive room. So the master room was huge. And then there was like like a, a bedroom, which my sisters would share. And then uh, I was left to, in my mom's room, but over by like her window, she had like this thing called like a day bed where she'd like put throw pillows and like she'd like lay on it and read like in the in the daylight or whatever because light would come in the window and uh <clears throat> yeah, it's been a minute since i've had one of these sandwiches let's mail load it who cares So good. See, so yeah, anyway, so I would stay in my mom's room when I was there. But she would be in her bed, and then I'd be on that little thing called the day bed because I was 10 and I was a squirt. I was a little scrawny boy. Once I hit puberty, that all changed, but. Shout out honey mustard. So legend had it at this house when the family used to live there. A lot of really terrible shit went down. And then It was said to be that multiple murders had occurred there at one point in time. So one night, I go to bed, so like in my mom's room and I would always ask her to leave the door open because I was, you know, a young little bit scared of the dark and shit. And then, so, where the moon would be in, like, the front of the building, essentially, her bedroom's kind of in the back, but, like, the light from the moon would shine through the huge windows in the living room down the hall and light up her doorway. So when I was laying in her bed, or, well, sorry, my bed, but in her room, I can see out into the hallway, like the uh, door frame w would be illuminated so that I could feel like comfy and safe and like I could just go to the bathroom and you know what I mean, all that shit.
whoppers, I'm telling you. So we go to bed. I fall asleep. A couple hours later, I wake up. And I look out into the door frame. And in the doorway, and like I said, because it's a mansion, they had high ceilings, you know, big luxurious spaces. So the door frames were really tall. I want to say like eight feet. And uh, I look into the door frame and I see like this gigantic. person but shadow person I can't make out any details it's definitely not any of my sisters because my sisters aren't like seven foot 300 pounds that being said this whatever it was what I believe to now be like a demonic like shadow entity um, had really like I could tell that's the only thing I could tell on it I could see like its short like the shoulders and like the like the build of the body, but the one thing that I could tell is that it had really long I could just see its hair essentially like really long almost like if I had to classify it it'd be like banger hair like rocker hair like headbanger you know I could just it looked a bit rough, really long, past the shoulders. That's really the only detail I can make out, like, really distinguished. But it was crazy because it was just a silhouette standing in the doorway. And I could see all the light. Like I said, the moon was coming down the hallway. I could see all the light through where it wasn't taking up space in the doorway. And so I know that, like, When you wake up in the dark, shit can play tricks on you. So that's why I sat there and I like rubbed out my eyes and I looked and I sat there for like what felt like eternity, but like a good five minutes, just like trying to figure out what, it, what was happening. Never moved, never heard, any, heard anything. It was just standing there looking directly in, in the room. And so, I don't know if it was looking at me or just, I don't know. I don't know. It was, I'm getting goosebumps right now. It was fucking creepy. And uh, so, as like a child would do, like I just was like, I'm not going to get up and do anything about this because fuck that. I'm going deep dive, full submerge under my covers. So that's what I did. I went out of the covers. I just waited it out. I was like, if I'm going to die, it's going to get me anyways. Like, but I'm at least going under the covers. And uh, I waited, I waited, I waited, I waited, I waited, I waited, I waited. Came back out eventually, looked out into the door frame, completely gone. Back to empty, moonlight, I could see down the hallway again. It's like, holy shit. So from there, I could fall asleep, and then whatever. Now, I basically kept that low-key for a long, 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 long time. Eventually I told my mom about it. And my mom's like, yeah, I know. 
I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, you know. She's like, I've seen it. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, not when you, not when, not that night. But she's like, when I've been here alone, she's like, I'll just be laying on the couch, and all of a sudden, out of the corner of my, out of my eye, between my room, the bathroom, and the kitchen, I'll see this dark figure just whoosh, pass by. Fuck, I'm getting goosebumps. This is so crazy. Like honestly, you could see them. Holy fuck. So she's like, I, yeah, she's like, I've seen it. It's swooped by. She's like, I know I'm living with something crazy. I was like, wow. And then she's like, there's also. She's like, there's also been nights where I feel like. I gotta give you one more close up. Also been nights where. I've been shook and awake and wake up and there's nobody, nothing there. But she could swear that somebody, you know, shook her to wake her up. So I do fully believe in like paranormal entities, ghosts, I don't know, demons. That thing looked to me like a demon. I did not look like a, that was a big, black, crazy haired shadow figure. Now, Another thing that happened that was sort of creepy, not as creepy, but same thing at that same place. <clears throat> My mom met this woman. In the hospital and became friends with her. But she was having a really hard time in life and, you know, addicted to some drugs and nowhere to stay. Was being like released from the hospital and stuff. And my mom was like, you know what? You can come stay at my place for a while. Like my kids are only there half of the time. And I can take you in for a little while, try to help you out, you know, try to, Make sure you stay clean and because my mom used to battle with alcohol, but she was sober, so and she still is. She's fine now, but um, so she understood this lady's struggle. So she was like, "Come stay at my place." Da da da. And uh, like we met, me and my sisters met this woman, her name was Kathleen and you know, whatever, whatever. She was nice and whatever and cool and, but she dressed in like all black, black leather. She's a bit like a, of a rocker and like her favorite animal, like she loved black cats. I don't know how long it was after, but not long, long, not shortly, but like sort of some time after she stayed at uh, with us at my mom's, she ended up overdosing and dying. So, this building, my mom's building, was a no pets building, no pets allowed. And there was only one main entrance, and you had to like pick up a phone, dial a rotary thing, connect with the person upstairs, zzz, and open this door. And this door, no joke, to open was like, like 50 pounds. Like this door was old and heavy. And would like, if you caught your hand caught in it, it would like cut your hand off. 
I'm like dead serious. So to get into the building is not easy and I don't see how an animal could. One day me and my sister are chilling. All of a sudden we hear a scratching and a meowing at, our, at my mom's door. Open the door, it's a black cat. Chilling, just looking up at us. We're like, weird, okay. We bring it in for a sec, kind of just like, what should we do? We're like, I don't know, we just got, let's just take it outside and get rid of it. Like, it can't be here and we can't take care of it. Like, just put it outside, it's a cat, it'll be fine. So, my sister grabs it, takes it outside, we dump it outside, right out front of the big door, close the door, make sure everything's, you know what I mean? There's no way, Mr. Cat's getting back in. I don't know, 10, 15 minutes later, same thing. We hear the same shit at the door. Cat's back. Looking up at us, we open the door. We're like, what the fuck? How is this thing back? <clears throat> Excuse me. Like, where is it get where is it getting in? No idea. Take it out. What do you think happens next? Sure enough, same thing, 15 or so minutes later, third time, back at our door. Scratch me out, scratch me out, let me in. This time, we get almost to the door to take it out again at the bottom of the stairs because I had to go down one, two, three, and four. The fourth set of stairs is huge. So we're approaching the end of the fourth set of stairs to get to the door to kick the cat out again. This cat goes ballistic on my sister. I'm talking like full hair, like just screaming at the top of its lungs clawing hair everything goes crazy on my sister we somehow get it chuck it get it out this time it doesn't come back doesn't return and I don't know what, like, I, I know it's like whatever, but it's just creepy to me that like this lady that was taken in, the fuck was that? This lady that my mom took in, favorite animals, black cats, dies. No pets in the building and this cat repeatedly somehow gets into the building comes right to our door multiple times and on the third time essentially freaks out almost as if like trying to tell you like tell us something you know what I mean that's what it felt like to me when I thought back to it I felt like it snapped because you know it was trying to communicate something or whatever but I don't know maybe it was Kathleen reincarnate I don't know it was super weird though that also like inexplicable but crazy to this day I'm so full. Ah. 
Well, I hope it didn't creep you out too much. Or maybe I creep you out entirely and you can't sleep now. <laughs> but until the next one, you know what you got to do. You got to eat good. You got to live well. Yeah, stay true.